uh, satellite imagery uh, is the, the, an important source of data for landscape management or environmental uh, monitoring or GIS analysis of landscape. Uh, we have different archives. Uh, there are two main satellites that are available for free. There's Landsat and Sentinel. Landsat is American, uh, driven by USGS, and Sentinel is uh, driven by uh, European Space Agency. So, and how can we browse our data, our satellite data? Uh, at first, I will show you site that's called Sentinel Explorer. Uh, Sentinel Explorer is a, a web mapping application created by Esri. And if we log in using your RGS online credentials, then we will get access to uh, the serve data. These data are available as an image service that we can add in our RGS online, uh, sorry, in RGS Pro, and we, we can work with them later. Uh, let's see, I will try to find Usti as is our area of interest. So here we have Usti and Laban. And here you can see that imagery from December 24th, so Christmas Eve. You can see that there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of cloud. So cloudy images are not good for satellite image processing. Okay, so we can try to find here. We have a time selector, and here we can say that we would like to have images with a, a only a ten percent cloud maximum. Okay. So now the images should be loaded. And you can see that this image is from the 20th September 2020. And it, it's the last image this autumn where there was so little, there was so little clouds. So we said more clouds, let's say 25% cloudy. And you can see that we can go all the way to uh, 25th uh, October. Uh, and there is going to be some cloud. <clears throat> the very big advantage of satellite images is that uh, uh, they contain, uh, you see, there's like on this image is 25% cloud because if you zoom out, the, the image is, is, is large. So it counts the cloud cover for the, for the whole big image. Okay, so uh, just we wait uh, till it's loaded. Ah, it takes time. Never mind. Uh, so if we return back to our ten percent cloud coverage. In Usti. So the big advantage of satellite images is that they contain the different spatial bands. So here we have Sentinel-2 satellite and if we look on Sentinel-2 satellite So here's the basic objectives. Satellite the description. Oh, they just image ground of personality. But I would like to see the spatial bands, so maybe in this one moment it will be working. 
No. Uh, but probably Sentinel to fix for bonds. Well, check the Wikipedia. So I see that they have routine bonds. And uh, here you can see the certain bounds that number two, three, and four are blue, green, red. That are the only three bands that we can uh, see with our own eyes. And then we have uh, vegetation red, near infrared, water vapor, and these are like uh, water or something. Uh, so. And the special resolution is 10 meters. You see, uh, the RGB is 10 meters. Uh, this, what we see here, is called a true color. It means that these colors are the way we are, we know, uh, we see the world with our own eyes, a true color. But thanks. To our different, uh, thanks to the different spectral bands, <clears throat> uh, we can see other things in, uh, in in false color. Let's say that here we would like to see the band combination for agriculture. It means that now we see the RGB, red, green, blue combination. Now uh we're gonna see combination that uh, reflects uh, or enhances the agriculture uh, here we have a color infrared it's this is showing vegetation the more red means the more healthy vegetation you can see it for instance here here are fields that have been harvested uh, so there is no vegetation See, harvest fields, and here are meadows or fields that has not been harvested yet, or the forests. This petrol com band combination is used for, let's say, uh, sensing of forest health. So the more red, the more healthy is the vegetation. So. You see that there is a lot of combinations, pretty fine combinations that we can we can have a lot we can have a look on. So here is short wave infrared, for instance. Again, showing vegetation, and we see the build-up areas highlighted. Uh, here we can see NDVI, which is uh, which is a vegetation index. The highest value, the, m the more vegetation it is. Uh, if you try to click in, you can see here that here there is no vegetation. We should have, we should get the response soon. I just ah here we have the spectral plot. So here we have see the spectral plot, but we don't see the exact value of the NDVI. That doesn't matter. I'll show you in the RGS program. Okay, so that's the uh that's the Sentinel. If we would like to see something in Turkey. Istanbul. Barcelona. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> this way, I guess. So we just try to zoom in ourselves.
we can see that we have here a match from January 2nd because in Istanbul it wasn't cloudy. So you can have a very up to date satellite images. Because uh, the sequence and the day they run over every four days. So if we look here in the mountains. So if we check the coral infrared, so here you can see that there is no vegetation in the mountain, but here you can see red of red values for healthy vegetation. You see? Or here forests maybe, but it, it's like in the winter, so uh, not very healthy vegetation. Okay. So that is uh, Sentinel. Uh, but Esri allows us to view only one and a half year back. If you would like to see more, then we have to go to uh, Sentinel Playground. And here, because Sentinel started to work like 2015, so we can get data for 2015, which is amazing. So if I say Uti, again here. So here we can have a look on the calendar. So here you can see the days where we have data from. But you see 100% felt cover on the image. So there's not much to see. Right? You can see that every fourth day there's a new image. Although December was very in this period. Maybe if you look up into the mountains when there is a, you can see that up in the mountains there is no no fog so you can see something but these data are not good for satellite data processing right? You, you should have like a clear clear view of the sky. Okay, but now let's have a look on Lanza. We can use the same Lanza Explorer. As a similar view platform. <clears throat> Again, I will sign in using my RJS online account. I get access to all of the data. And I go to Uti oh, sorry. Uti Lanza. So you see imagery I was a six. Uh the, now we have here Lanza A because there's a lot of Lanza satellites going from Lanza, I don't know, one to number eight. Uh, the spectral uh, or the spatial resolution is worse. Uh, Sentinel has 10 meters. Lanza has 30 meters. So it means that the images, it means that the images are not of that good quality. So if you just zoom, if you just zoom in, So if we zoom in, <clears throat> so you can see 
that the Landsat is more blurry because it has spe special resolution of 30 meters. So, and Pinel 2 10 meters and Landsat 30 meters. So, but uh, uh, but uh, Landsat has a library going back to 1974, right? And uh, Sentinel, and Sentinel goes back only to 2015. So Sentinel has a very huge library of satellite images, right? Uh, if you would like to work with more uh, Landsat uh, images, so if you look on this time scale here, so you can see that we can go all the all back to 1975. Okay. For instance, here you can see here is a big mining site, right? They are mining the brown coal. Okay. And if you look back, <clears throat> if you look back to 1972, <clears throat> well, okay, so this didn't work out very well. Let's see what can we find here. So there's an image from 1973, so let's check it out. Because the, all the images are of very bad quality, you, you see, very bad quality, but like 50 years old data to, to be analyzed, which is amazing. Uh, if you would like to download the data from Landsat, because again, this S3 service, this S3 Landsat Explore service offers only some data, not all of them, only selected periods. But if you would like to get all of them, then the, the USGS, the American Geological Survey, uh, they have USGS Forest Explorer. I will put you all the links uh, in the Moodle, so you have them, okay? So, there's this link. And here, we can just go and search for the desired data set, okay? So, I will just move to Europe. I say okay, I am interested in this area. I would like to see images for this area or download them. So I see I have to say that I would like to define the area by, by the map. So like this. And you see that a polygon was created. And now I will start uh, for the data. At first I have to set data range. So let's say I am interested in data from uh, in the Czech Republic, there were uh, huge floods, like uh, high water, a lot of rain uh, and floods in 2002. So let's say that I would like to see data from uh, 2002, from July the 1st to the end of 2002 to the end of August, okay? And the cloud cover should be, the cloud cover should be again, let's say 20%, okay? So there is not much cloud. So we go to data sets and I would like to search for Landsat. Uh, I would like to see 
uh, oh, not what is C, which one it is, I'm, I'm never sure. Uh, I think that we would like to have Landsat Collection 1, level 1. So, and in this period, Landsat 7 was observing. So let's say, and let's see, let's see the results. So, here you, I have results from my query. And here I have an image from 22nd August 2002. Here I can see a footprint of the image. You see that this is the images are, are very large. You see that one image is covering almost half of the Czech Republic, right? Here I can have a fast overview of the image, right? And if we look closer, so all these brown areas, you see the brown area here. Uh, this brown area uh, is area that was over flooded by the flood. Okay. If we look at image from uh, 21st July, so you see it's before the floods, right? And there is no, uh, you see, there is no flooded area. And just a month's difference, okay? And if I would be in, if I'm interested in the image from 22nd August to be downloaded, I have to log in. Uh, you can create a new account, it's, it's for free. You, you just have to fill in, you just have to fill in some information, right? Uh, what my query is, what my query is gone. Oh no. Okay, let's see. Again, let's do it again. Data sets. One set. Results. Okay, now I can download. And what do you, what we need to download is level one GeoTIFF data always the largest that are the raw data with all the bands we need okay i have already downloaded them uh, i will post them on our moodle so you can download them later and, and try to work with them if you want okay so we don't we, we don't waste time with this okay uh okay and one more thing i would like to show you there is a google service Go, uh, called uh, Google Time Lapse. I don't know if you have heard of it. And this is, a, let's say, a very simple application uh, that is uh, that is showing. Uh, uh, that is showing, uh, you see, uh, the, the time series of satellite images going from 1984 till 2018. And you can, you can check any place on Earth. It just, it just takes some time to cache the data. Uh, it's, it's still working well, it's funny, as I can see. Oh, okay, here we go. Just take some time to load the data. So you can see how is the glacier changing over the time. From 1984 till now, you can see how, how the glacier is melting. Or you can look at the drying of the Aral Sea. You know the Aral Sea, right? I need to get myself a new computer. It's like first look. You just wait a bit to so the images are downloaded.
So you can see how is the RLC drying, right? On a time series of uh, product images. Or if you look at our area, and we can have a look on the mining sites in our region. Just, just wait till it gets downloaded. I'm sorry, but just takes time. So you can see here how the mining sites are spreading, right? That is the coal that is mined, actually. You can see how they continue. You can see it everywhere. Like the black line or the black stripe is moving forward, is how they mine the coal. So this is like a fast visualization or landscape changes with the satellite images, okay? So now we go back to our GIS environment. So, uh, here I can stream that. And we can start working we can start working with satellite images, okay? Uh, at first, uh, I will show you, okay. Uh, the most easiest way is to use uh, the data uh, from the RGS online. So you, you don't have to download anything, okay? You just bring the data in. So I insert a new map. I add a base map, let's say the topographic base map. And uh, we go back again to our area of interest, to here to Usti. Right. So here in the catalog pane, I go to portal. And here as my RGS online content. So you have you have different content here, right? But I would like to go to Living Atlas. Okay. Living Atlas is a place where you can find different layers with well, but these layers have uh, this uh, how to say uh, they include time. So in one service, we have different time layers, okay? This includes uh, the Sentinel. So I search for Sentinel. And I like this one Sentinel to views. What I will get now, just you have to wait a moment. And what I will have here is the latest Sentinel image for the, it's not the whole world because the satellite is not covering these areas in North, but almost the, the whole Europe is covered and Africa, South America, North America, is so a lot of data for free. So now we go back to our area of interest. And so now we have to search, now we have to search for the time layers, okay? Or for the desired uh, image. We know this image, this image is from the Christmas, right? With the clouds. 
we have seen on the Sentinel Explorer. But on the Sentinel Explorer, we as well found out that the best image is from September 20, which is still usable. Or if we would like to analyze uh, the quality of vegetation, then we have to go to the high vegetation period, which is which is June, let's say. Okay. So I will just see. Uh, come on, I'm selector, and let's say August six, April, June. Twenty second June is fine, right? High vegetation period. We should be able to filter this in RGS Pro, but this function is just not working for me. I don't know why. Maybe uh, I have, uh, but there's a close. Uh, we don't want these close. So let's say August the first. Close are problem because they are covering landscape and the shades are causing problems. And in, uh, in, in, in the person, okay, August the first is fine. Okay. So here I go to data and there's a function called explore raster items. So I choose it. I, I just have to wait a bit because it takes some time before all the items are downloaded. So we just wait a bit. And we should be able to filter by date and cloud cover because the fields are there, but I was never able to filter the data. So my workflow is that I choose the appropriate layer in Sentinel Explorer or in the Sentinel play Playground. And then I go directly to find it in ArcGIS Pro. You see, now it is here. So uh, let's say that I am in interested in, okay, I zoom in, in, in a bit, so I just have this area of interest. So, by area of interest, uh, the display expand, right? And now we go by attribute, by field. So, let's say that acquisition date is in between uh, July the 1st and uh, oh, gosh. I'm too far and 21st August. Okay, and now. It should filter the data, but it says no items made to query. So I say none, and I just say apply. And now it just show me all the images that are covering this area. And because I found out that uh, I just sorted by acquisition date. Come on. And because I know that I am searching for uh, um, the first of the first of August, which is fine. So August the first is here. So let's say I just click here and add it. And the image is added, right? The, 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 the desired date. So I can get rid of my Sentinel to view. And you can see that the image is covering a very large area. Okay. So, but we are working in this area of interest around Ufti.
and again here we have you can in the data tab we have a processing template because these data are coming from an image service so we, we have here the same raster band combination so we can try to call infrared So you see, the more red, the more healthy vegetation, right? And we are interested, we are interested in, let's say, in this area, because this area uh, is uh, a former mining site, right? And uh, is there a cultivation? And we can we would like to analyze this in more detail. We would like to see how uh, to analyze the or to analyze the actual end cover. And if we do this, we can take an older image and we can compare them, for instance. I will always show you how to derive vector data from here. Because if we are interested in the land cover, let's say how many forests, how much uh, what is the area of the forest? What is the area of water bodies? What is the area of the former mining? Uh, sorry, of, of the harvested fields. If we if we would like to work with this like this, in this manner, then it's hard, and then you have to digitize it, click it, as we have created the map the map digitization. You 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 remember right, and that's very. It takes time and it's boring, right? But here we can use image processing algorithms to let the image classify by uh, the implemented algorithms, okay? So, uh, I will, because the image is big and I only would like to work in this area. So I will define uh, a new polygon for this region, okay? So, in the catalog pane, make it smaller. Uh, in the catalog pane, I go back to project. Uh, and here, I create a new folder. And I will just create a new shape file saying teacher's last name is gonna be MTML area. The polygon and coordinate system is the same as the map, right? Like scan. Now its array has been created and I will just draw just draw a polygon over here like that as my area of interest. Okay? So this is going to be my area of interest, okay? So, I save it. I just change the visualization. So this is my area of interest. When the area of interest is set, I have to go to an analysis tab. And to go to environment. And I have to say that this Sentinel area is, is my processing extent. Processing extent means the area where the analysis are performed. If I would not do this, 
the algorithms will process the whole satellite image, which is too big and it will take very long time and I will produce large data, which I don't need, right? So I just said the processing extends as the Sentinel area. Okay, so and now I'm ready for analysis. Uh, if I tell you in brief, uh, there are, let's say, two basic types of classification of the of this type of data, right? It's called uh, driven classification or supervised and unsupervised. Okay, I will show you both of them because it's easy in this GIS. The unsupervised classification means that I say, oh, let's say here I go to imagery tab, and here is a classification wizard, right? Uh, and in the classification wizard, I can say if the classification is supervised or unsupervised. If I use the unsupervised, it means that I say, okay, I have myself identified, let's say, 10 different land cover types, okay? So, and the algorithm will identify 10 different, uh, 10 different land cover types based on pixel-based analysis. It will just search the pixels and cluster the pixels together so 10 classes are created and later on I will assign my desired classes because he doesn't know if it's water or forest he he will just create classes okay and then it's up to me to say which class is water which class is forest which class is grassland okay which is not sometimes not easy but I will show you but at first you can see that we have to create a classification scheme. So I have pre pre I start a classification. I have to create a classification scheme so I know which classes will be the result. Okay. So I go to classification tools and there is training sample manager. Uh, and here I create the classification schemes. Here is some, it's called NLCD 2011, uh, is some American standardized classification scheme, which I don't want to use, okay? I would like to create my own for my area of interest. So I go here and say, I would like to create a new schema, okay? New scheme. But I make it is bigger, so I have all buttons in. So here I can do add a new class, okay? So if I look uh, on my Arab interest, then here I have a little water. So let's say water value will be one, color is gonna be blue, okay? Okay, then I have here forest, it would be number two, Let's say color dark green. Oh, sorry. I did, it, this was a subclass. I would like to create a class. Forest number two. What I have created, uh, the subclass means that, let's say, forest can be, I don't know, spruce trees, like with the trees with spikes or with leaves, or, uh, the gra uh, or the fields can be crops, grasslands, etc. Et right? So you can create subclasses if you like. But here we just go with classes. So water, forest, uh, we say grassland, number three, Green, then we have harvested fields. Uh, 
harvested field before the color harvested field then we have here this build up areas right Look up, then here is a photovoltaic uh, power plant. Photovoltaic power plant. So what is it? This looks like bare ground. Uh, uh, then we have here rows. If you are able to identify them, some grassland, forest, harvested fields, and this is water as well. But there are these water plants growing in, so. We can we can call it let's say green water. Okay, now when I'm happy, I, I just go and save it. Okay. Now I'm ready for the classification. Now I'm looking forward to see if there, because there used to be some errors, but I have a new version of, R of RGS Pro and the problem should be solved. So uh, let's have a look. So classification wizard, unsupervised, we use pixel-based classification. Uh, our classification scheme is here and output location will be again in this field. My application. So uh, there's only one type of classifier. Uh, I would like to have ten. Okay, we can say we do. We can do twelve classes, right? And then we uh, sort them to our classes we have defined. We set. We leave all the parameters. Now, hopefully, it's gonna work. Now you can see that the classifier has classified the images into different classes. And now it will be up to me to decide which class belongs where, okay? So I click next. It will create the classification output.
I hope that it will be finished successfully. But here you can see, uh, but here you can see that the water was classified. Uh, here, green water was classified as well. But here, the forest was classified as a green water as well, which is kind of a mistake. But we will see. Okay. Okay, so this was the problem we have talked about. Uh, never mind. Uh, never mind, we can still try to work with it. But we won't be able to define the classes by hand. This is some strange error that is appearing, uh, that is appearing every 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 single use hmm. never mind uh, if we have this preview here so we can we can try to convert it oh, okay doesn't matter uh, we go to the uh, we go to the how to say we go to the uh, supervised classification because there hopefully it's going to work. Anyway, uh, if we have this classified raster to this field, uh, if we go back and back, 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 and we say that we have defined in, I think that we have defined nine classes. We can try it again with, with just nine classes. So now it's it's a bit better with the nine classes. If we compare it with our image, let's say appearance. So here you can see how it has decided. You can see that the harvested fields are like one group then this other green is another type of harvested field but you see that this green water is decided to be uh, in the same class as a, as a meadow as a grassland right The road again is uh, de decided to be uh, something uh, a different class. Doesn't matter. Uh, as I said, that the unsupervised classification is not producing a good data sometimes. So now we uh, just I, I should get this error. Let's save it. And I will move on to the. Uh, I will move on to the uh, supervised classification, which is giving better results. And let's have a look how it works. Okay. So. I just get rid of this. And I go to imagery, classification tools, training sample manager. And because I would like to use my classification wizard, uh, sorry, with the train, uh, the supervised classification, I have to teach him which type is which. Okay. So it, it means it's there's water. I have to tell, tell him, look, my dear algorithm, 
water looks like this, right? Or it can look like this as well. Okay. Now forest. I say okay. The forest looks like this. Or like this. Forest is also this. Or this. Or this. And the more training samples we create, the better is the classification result later. Okay? So here again, forest. Here is some more forest. These are water bodies. And here again, a forest. Okay? So now, grassland. So the grassland looks like this, or like this, or like this. Or like this, like this, like this, or like this, okay? Harvested field, it looks like this, or like this, like this, So hopefully that's enough. Then build up. I just focus on these white roofs of these construction halls. Because let's say if we like to analyze this, these houses, that is pr problematic because the resolution is not very good. And uh, there's a mix of roads, gardens, uh, houses, which is not giving very good results, okay? Then here is the photovoltaic power plant, looks like this. Bare ground. I've seen the bare ground somewhere here, like some type of mine. Okay, then the roads. The roads could be problematic because they are very tiny. Right? Now, I'm not sure if the roads will be recognized well. But hopefully just the highway will be recognized. Then we have the green water. Let's say that the green water is this and this. Okay. Now I can because there is a rule that I can like Put this together. Oh God, I think that I made a mistake. And this. I have defined this as green water, which is a mistake, right? Green water goes together and normal water should be there. 
right? Then that was my mistake. And if we look at the percentages here, that uh, it's the percentage of the samples of the training fields should correspond to the areas of the uh, of the land of the land covers. Okay. So now when I'm happy with this, I just save it. Fields. Okay, and now I can go to classification wizard. So I go for supervised classification, which is pixel based. Classification scheme is the same, and training samples are the ones I have created. my training field so now I will get the same uh, view of training sample manager when I can now modify the training samples if I like if not then I go to next and now I can choose in between different uh, algorithms uh, I at first would like to try the maximum likelihood because this was problematic in the past, but I hopefully that now it is gonna work fine. So I try to run it. Because this function should give the best result. So now what we see here is the classified image, right? Water is well classified, green water, uh, harvested fields, even the roads are well recognized, which is amazing, right? It's nice. So I think that we can be happy with the classification, okay? So we click next. Let's see if we will receive. Now, now it works. Hopefully. We just wait a bit because now it's writing uh, the classified data set, but the classified data set should be limited only to my area of interest. Now we have you know we have the same error here which is strange. As, uh, but let's say let's check out if it has created something. The classified. No, there's the old one. Hmm. It is strange. I try, I try it again.
Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, we have this preview. So I can go for a function called, uh, hopefully it's gonna work. Raster to polygon. Uh, input feature is going to be uh, no, raster to polygon. So, hey, my input raster will be this uh, preview classified. Field is value, and I say that output polygon will be. You see now, I have here the polygons created from the from the raster. Okay. Uh, if I look in my attributes table, then I have here here the grid code, and the grid code equals to the classes I have created, right? So if I just turn all of this off and uh, I change the symbology to unique values, as the grid code. Now you see that the, po the polygons have the, the same uh, values that I have assigned uh, that I've assigned during uh, uh, the training uh, training classes definition. Okay, so here I have water. Water. This is gonna be forest. Number two is gonna be grassland. Number three, harvested field. Number four, built up. Number five, photovoltaic power plant. Number six, bare ground. Number seven, roads. And number eight, green water. If we, we can now we can only see here some mistakes that the green water was identified here where, where it's definitely not. We have too much of roads here around, which means that I maybe when I was making the road polygons that I could hit some uh, surrounding pixels. But let's say that this classification is not very bad. Okay, it's not excellent, but it's okay. And now, if I would like to make some like analysis of the land cover types, then uh, if I have this data in database, 
the areas will be computed automatically. But I create a stupid shape file where these data are not computed automatically. Then I have to create a field that is going to be called area. It will be uh, floats. Okay. Now I do a right click here and say uh, calculate geometry, right? And I would like to compute the area in uh, area geodesic coordinate system with some different maps. And area units, I would like to have them in uh, uh, actors, let's say. Okay, so in hectares, no, it has to be area and geodesic, and in hectares, so this is okay. And now the area should be computed for every polygon in the field. It takes time because there is like 25,000 polygons. So it takes some time to compute to compute uh, the areas. You see why these polygons are very small, but if we just look at bigger polygon, that you see they're like over 30 hectares polygon, okay? Uh, the biggest one should be the lake, right? No, this one. <clears throat> okay, and now if we would like to summarize it, so, just clear my selection and I, I say that uh, right click and summarize it means that I would like to uh, make the case field is grid code it means that it will summarize it will put together all grid code 1 all grid code 2 all grid code 3 etc and from the area, it will make a sum, okay? <clears throat> so now it's computed. The table is here and if I check it out, So here you can see that uh, the grid code, the frequency count, and the total area, right? So we can say that there is like 1800 hectares of forests in this area, 12 uh, 
1200 hectares of uh, grassland, etc. So it's a very fast way how we can classify satellite images. Okay. Uh, this was how we use the satellite images from RJS Online. You, you could see that there were like some slight problems with the, the classification because this error appeared before Christmas and we haven't solved it yet. But if I just remove all this, I just keep here, uh, I just keep the Sentinel area and I get rid of all of the rest. And I bring in, oh sorry, uh, I have downloaded the Lanta data from GS Explorer in the past, okay? And I have it prepared here. You see, this? these are Lanza 8 data, okay? Downloaded from the USGS site, as I have shown you in the beginning of the video. This is how the data log where you download them and up and up and unpack them. They have each of them has these uh, every TIFF is one band, right? And here they have metadata. Uh, is a file called MTL. MTL, and you can see that we can unwrap it. There is this wheel running and here is multispectral right and i can drag it in and you can see that it's covering the infant area but lanzat has a slightly worse resolution right than the sentinel so the image is like more blurry but you can see that these data are from uh, the 6th uh, august 2020 while the sentinel was the first of august so the data are almost identical right the same period so i have here my area of interest area and I can try to do the same classification because I have my classification scheme, I have my training field, so it shouldn't be a problem, okay? So I go to, so now uh, I can show you the whole process because this data will work properly because I'm not accessing any cloud store data, okay? So I go to imagery, and classification wizard supervise pixel based classification scheme will be the one we have used training samples the ones we have used right So now they are here. The only what I would remove are the roads because this the resolution is not good enough, and I am afraid that it will mess up the classification of the roads. You see that it's very it's very unclear and blurry, right? So I just remove the class road. Okay, so, and I can go and run the classification. Uh, I go for maximum likelihood.
<clears throat> but there is some problem. Will sample count prove how to fix it? It doesn't matter. Uh, it, it performs somehow. So, see the next. Stuff. Now it should perform well again, but you see that that the green water was also recognized here, and here is the whole lake recognized, which is which is fine, right? Uh, but here we have more bare no. Here, here is all the build up are recognized because I should have checked it. The build up because these arrows were too small and on the Landsat image, I could, you know what I mean. I could in the polygon get some arrows lying around. So, that's my result. And if we compare it, that it should it looks good. Okay. If we go back again, then I will remove my build up areas because this is too much build up. And I try to rerun it. So now it looks better, right? Now I have here water, green water. You, you can see that the water was recognized as well here, as well here, a few pixels of water. Uh, the bare ground was recognized well, as well the roads were recognized, the main roads. So I think I can be happy with this result. Right? So that is my result. which is absolutely fine, or almost fine, okay?